All right. I am so excited, so honored to have Ryan Taylor here on the Move Happy Movement podcast. Woo! Super excited. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time today, girl. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. For those that, you know, aren't connected to you yet, um, I always love to share the story of how I connect with people. And we actually connect, connected because I applied for a job at your company. <laughs> yeah, <yes. laughs> Legit real life people, real life. So <laughs> you're all things, all things tech, QA services. You've worked with really big corporations and you decided to, I don't want to tell your story, but you decided to launch your own company. So we're going to, we're going to talk today about kind of what inspired you to get started with that and what yeah. you're, what you're really excited about what's going on right now and where you see the future of your company headed. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I don't know where to start. There's so many places to start. I can start with how I got into tech. Love it. Oh, yes. And then we'll backtrack from there if we need to. Okay. Um, I was really inspired by um, Steve Jobs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just his story and really the, the business side of it. I call this might sound weird. I call Steve Jobs the Kim Kardashian of the tech mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. because he he set himself and put himself in certain positions, communicated and networked with the right people to get um, himself to where he was. He did it mm -hmm. um, college, mm -hmm. um, and you know just that alone was very inspiring. Yeah. Just, I'm a people person. I love talking and networking, just like you. I think that's yes. why we connect and click. Yes, and just how you can network and just just you know they always say it's not what you know it's who you know absolutely Steve Jobs is the definition of that for sure <laughs> and Kim <laughs> Kardashian right so it's weird we live in a society where people are becoming millionaires and billionaires um doing something that they didn't necessarily grow up doing mm -hmm. um some people can start a tech company and not have written one line of code mm -hmm. and now they're millionaires and billionaires. Yes. So there's like <laughs> there's some type of algorithm and key to just networking and working with people. Yeah. And just integrating that with technology. I and that. just that just that fascination of technology and really got me um changing my major several times. Yeah. <laughs> Back in college, I changed mm -hmm. my major at least four or five times. I saw a list and I saw one I didn't even recognize I'm like because I had no idea when we're young when we're 18 19 yep. we don't know what we want to do with the rest yep. of our lives mm -hmm. um, so to go back to Steve Jobs that's really what inspired me and what I did was I'm a risk taker I take a lot of risk um I don't mind asking and getting mm -hmm. told no some mm -hmm. people are so scared of rejection yeah I'm like you know are we all on this podcast yes <laughs> I'm just saying that's why we connect. Yes, very much yeah. so. I'm like, do it, take action and figure it out later and adjust if you need to. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. And that, you can apply that to QA also. We might get to that later. Um, <laughs> yes. So, um, all I had on my resume was Kroger, mm -hmm. Babies Are Us. You know, like what, what else would a regular like 20 year old have on their resume? Yeah. So I applied to be a developer. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> At a software company, mm -hmm. I just randomly applied and it was on Craigslist. Can you believe that? Wow. I, okay, I, it's crazy. Um, I got my first job from Craigslist. <laughs> my, first I love real, that. my first real tech job. Um, applied to be a developer. I ended up having an interview um, with the QA manager mm -hmm. um, and she interviewed interviewed me for the QA role because of course I don't I don't know how to be a developer I don't know anything yeah um, and she said all, all you need to do is break she gave me a verifone terminal mm -hmm. which is a credit card swiper and you type in your pin number one mm -hmm. of those pin pads and she said all you have to do is break this and basically you can get the job and also I told her I was a single mom I told her I was mm -hmm. in college mm -hmm. trying to you know work on some family issues yep and but just somehow it's just crazy she gave she gave me the role no experience so that's what I mean by a risk taker I could have I, I could have been like 
they're not going to hire me. I'm just not going to go. Yep. And I would not be where I'm at today. Yes. <laughs> you know what we I mean? We love that. We love that yeah. woman. Yes. For giving you that yes. chance. Yes. She's so amazing. Um, mm. But ever since I had my first QA role, um, mm-hmm. I always wanted to be a QA manager mm-hmm. and own my own company. So from that. really the second month. <laughs> I love that. Went to my career. Yes. I, was like, I, I love, I love this. I love it was my first time being in an office setting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in tech, it's, it's an office setting. Um, kind of like the office, like there's printers, the cubicle, sometimes everyone mm-hmm. they dress up, they might wear jeans or t-shirts, whatever it might be. Yeah. So just, I was so excited <laughs> to work in an office. So I don't know. I, and just being fascinated with learning about technology and, mm-hmm. The back end of stuff. So me, a consumer, I love online shopping. I've always mm-hmm. loved it my entire life. Mm-hmm. So when I got my first role doing point of sale applications and testing Verifone terminals and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and data, like how the servers talk to each other and money transaction stuff, I like I was just fascinated from mm-hmm. my first role. And I've been doing point of sale and e-commerce testing for almost nine years now. Love so, that. I love yeah. that. So you're you've had this big vision over your life. You're a risk taker. So you're not afraid to ask people, let me do this. Let me figure it out. I got you. And you've wow. been able to have some really huge opportunities work, working with some big companies. You do you mind sharing some of those companies? Yeah. You- so um this this is almost like an interview. This is an interview. Um <laughs> so I'm going, this is the same things I say in my interviews. It's, just basically telling my resume. So I got that first role. Um, I got four raises while I was there. Oh, girl. Um, yeah, it was, it was, a, you know, when you have a small company and the owner was there, I was sat next to the owner's office. It was a very mm-hmm. small startup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I got like four raises. So I'm like, wow, I see my value. That, that's yes. the first job taught me my value. I was mm-hmm. learning a skill mm-hmm. and now I was the expert. Now they come to me asking me about the application because QA, you're supposed to know everything about the application. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up leaving because I wanted to make more money. Yep. I was really bad at negotiating early in my career. Actually, I have some <laughs> tips I can like train people on. I was okay with like one dollar raises, and I'm like, I you would be 90 years old to work, get the money you want. So I hear that. Yeah. So, um, just in the beginning, I was bad at negotiating. So mm-hmm. I would work somewhere. I would try to work there at least a year. Mm-hmm. So my resume looked nice because it's okay to jump around, but it yep. just needs to be at least a solid year yeah. at every company. Mm-hmm. Um, and some companies I was just struggling. I had to do Uber and Lyft. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. While I just struggled to try to figure out how can I make more money. Yep. Um, because I was getting severely underpaid um, as I was going through the years. As you, you look at the median of what other QA engineers are getting and what I was getting, It was significantly lower. It was like $18 an hour. Whereas where I was at, other QAs were making 30. Why do you think that was? Do you have any idea of? Um, it could be me taking the first offer and not valuing myself higher. Okay. Um, but speaking of that, then I worked at, (laughs) um, expand like I don't know if I can say the names maybe you can bleep them out I worked at maybe you don't have to say the names if you don't want to you've worked no you don't apologize you are a huge success story like I've I've been able to hear bits and pieces through our event we had uh last week or two weeks ago Mm -hmm. now and to hear that heart that passion that soul that you have and to overcome a lot of life's barriers that I would say 90% of the world, if not 99% have never had to go through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I don't want to say it was race or gender related, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I'm a double minority in my field. I'm yeah. a woman. So yep. you know, it's yep. already male dominated. Yeah. Sometimes I was the only girl in the whole company or the only girl on the tech. Wow. Team. And then definitely wow. I was only black girl, <laughs> or sometimes I was the only black person in the whole. Yeah. Thing. So, 
yeah, I don't want to say it's related to that, but also a mixture of me being not valuing myself. Um, that has to do with it. Mm -hmm. But I, I did learn how to over time. Yeah. Mature. Cause you have to realize I got into the tech world at, while I was maturing. I was yep. 20 years old, 21, yeah. 22. Those are early ages where you're still maturing. You yeah. have your first apartment. So I really went through jumping through hoops and um, being degraded and just, you know, thugging it out. Yes. <laughs> until, I, until I had leverage, I wanted to build the years that I had to have leverage mm -hmm. to say, okay, now I'm worth $50 an hour. Yes. I can negotiate down if they don't have that in budget instead mm -hmm. of me being one or two years in, then, you know, you just have to get walked all over. Yep you know, in any career, you know, yep, I hear that. <laughs> so, I hear that. I love, I, I love all that of us have to deal with that too. Yeah. And, and the fact that you're like, you're owning up to your part of it, your responsibility, you know, Hey, maybe I didn't speak up and negotiate and, and, and ask for my value and whatnot. So I love that. You're not saying it was somebody else. It's, it's, yeah. it's a combination, I think too. And with, you know, deciding to launch your company, like, what are you really excited about? Like, where do you see your company going in the future? Yeah. Um, like you mentioned, I have worked directly and indirectly with big corporations. So mm -hmm. I already have a foot in the door with um, connections of people I've actually worked with at these yeah. billion dollar, million dollar corporations. Yes. Um, so I really want my company to, my QA company to also offer development services. Mm -hmm. So we can also not only do QA and test, we can also mm -hmm. develop if a client needs it to keep it all in house. Um, but I would like to be um, in Atlanta, one of the biggest QA companies. Yes. Um, and then, you know, the whole United States. Um, I love the world. that. <laughs> yes. Go yeah. big or go home. And yeah, so there was someone you wanted to be the, you described a, a celebrity and you said you wanted to be this for QA. You, or you want to say that? Do you job. It's weird. Hmm. It's kind of a blend of Steve Jobs <laughs> and Kim Kardashian. And Kim Kardashian. So I, I want, I want the, the respect of Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. but, um, but with what I want to go with, with my company, I need mm -hmm. the celebrity part that yes. Kim Kardashian has because um, I also have a nonprofit um, that I really want to be really big, like you know, everyone's donating it like big as like the March of Dimes. I, yes. We need, we need a bigger, we need something that's one of the top things that people are donating to that actually go to the, the cause and not the CEOs. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because you want to talk more about that. Yeah. Because I don't know if you've done some research, but some of these nonprofits, let's say, five cents of every dollar goes to the actual cause. Yep. Like I've heard some crazy stories yep. like that. Whereas if I have my own money and doing my own thing and I, and other people, CEOs on the board of my nonprofit mm -hmm. also have their own money. We don't need to take anything. It can be 100% nonprofit. Yep. And I feel like a lot of companies just lose sight of that. They're like, let's just start a nonprofit right off taxes and just everyone's rich, but oh yeah, we also give a little bit to the cancer patients too. Like yeah it doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. so i just want to change the game and the qa game the nonprofit game <laughs> um my end goal really is to end homelessness and it's it's very attainable especially if you i've been on a lot of road trips there's a lot of land in this in this you know country that i don't want to say tear down the trees but i think we have enough trees <laughs> i don't want people to cancel me <laughs> the tree people <laughs> <laughs> but just I don't know if you've been up um 85 mm -hmm. you keep on going north mm -hmm. there's every every exit or up 316 every exit they're starting to develop build a bridge build apartments make it like um like Pond City Market like downtown Atlanta kind of little mini towns mm -hmm. so for example like there's just a lot of land and it, it can be utilized. There's, there shouldn't be a reason we should have anyone homeless in America. Yes. That's really yes. the yes. wrong way of me saying that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There's no reason, There's no reason that um, people need to have 12 people in a one bedroom. Yes. You know, so, 
or people sleeping in their car because I've definitely had done all of the above mm-hmm. slept in the car slept in a living room slept yep. in a homeless shelter yeah so yeah <laughs> You've been at both ends of the spectrum and you're wanting to give back. I love, I love your heart. And that's why another reason why we connected and I just love your story and your heart because you're, you're a person that is taking action both in business, but also in heart and soul and giving back. Um, I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, One of the things, and you've touched on it. One of the, the pillars of move happy is about keeping a positive mindset with some of the experiences that you've gone through, either personal or professional, what are some strategies you could share with our listeners in keeping a positive mindset, maybe for other QA professionals or those interested in the field? Um, For tech people or just in general, or maybe a blend? Yeah, (laughs) however you feel. Yeah, whatever you feel is uh, is coming out. (laughs) Um, Definitely have hobbies. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, definitely exercise routines. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever relaxes you, mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen the social dilemma, Mm-mm. but it's about how um, it's weird. Technology is so amazing, and then it's so destructive. Like <laughs> the movies with the robots going to take over could happen because the humans program it but um like I've turned off my notifications for a lot of my apps I have over 300 apps on my iPhone wow yeah (laughs) yeah that's you know built over time and like 10,000 pictures and Mm -hmm. just a lot of notifications I'm really happy they added the stats because you see that if you're spending 24 hours a week on one app then you need to that's a whole day. Yes. <laughs> like, why did you, yes. a whole, that's a whole 24 hours you could have spent building your business yep. or exercising or, yes. or doing something mm-hmm. instead of like playing a game or, you know, whatever it may be. So I limited, yes. even for my son, I limited, um, for Instagram example, only one hour a day, mm-hmm. all social mm-hmm. media apps, one hour mm-hmm. a day, um, instead of like eight, like mm-hmm. that's a whole work day, <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? That's a whole timesheet. <laughs> so, what? I you love that. How much time you spend. Yep. Um, and then the movie just talks about like pe- it putting people against each other. So if you live in one region, your Google search is going to show up. Yes, climate change is real. If you live in another region, it's going to say it's not real or the earth's flat. It just gives you different. Yeah. Just it's putting people against each other. Even if you live in the same neighborhood, or they, it can be your own friend. Mm-hmm. So technology, it's, it's, a, it's great, but we have to use it in good ways. Yes, I agree. And, and that's why I call my company Serene Quality. Yes. It's like a peace of mind, like peaceful, like serenity, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. I love that. And those are great tips for, for mindset for, I think for everybody. Um, and especially those that are, you know, in the tech space, I think they can also relate. I know when you said that I don't identify myself as a tech professional, but I use technology a lot and I've turned off all of us do. All, all yeah. of us are tech professionals. This yes. Is. Yeah. And, and we have to be the baby's tablets. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Fun. That is so true. You're helping change that language for myself. So yeah. thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, second yeah. pillar of move happy is all about building community. And yeah. I love what you're about with your nonprofit, um, you know, helping end homelessness and what you're, you're really mission driven. What are some, some things that you've learned along your journey in building community as a female minority in the QA space? You've mentioned, you kind of touched on that. What are, what are some ways that you've connected to other professionals that you'd like to share? Um, so I guess me becoming a mom early, I've always been motherly. Yeah. So, and then as a QA, you're really a liaison between developers who are mm-hmm. already kind of socially awkward, like, mm-hmm. like it's it's real the stereotype is kind of real like we're all like ah we don't even it's weird talking to each other sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway <laughs> as a liaison from developers mm-hmm. to like business analysts and account managers project managers mm-hmm. um because you don't want them talking to developers and then them going stepping over QA's toe so um they might de- go develop something and it's like really my job is to be like why did you do that yeah, like, <laughs> <not> directly. Like, 
<laughs> kind of a parental role almost. <laughs> That's my, that is my job to tell a developer what they did wrong. <laughs> that's, that's my whole career that's my whole business model but it, it's it's funny um and then a lot of developers don't like QA and then some get along some don't but it's 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 really crazy but the point is um a lot of them would come to me mm -hmm. it just anyone any role and I I don't know why but I, I think I give good advice um, because a lot of people come to me for advice, I think, because mm -hmm. I really, I've been through a lot. Yeah. So, and I like to talk and like get to know people mm -hmm. and I always want to make things better. That's really why I want to have my nonprofit yes. in homelessness, because I, I want to figure out how I can make other people's situation and lives better because I was able to do it for myself, but I see yep. other people need help. Yep. Um, and I some people that. honestly don't, don't want the help, but yeah. That's true. Maybe we can change their mind. And I really just want, I really want everyone to be happy. <laughs> I love that. And, yeah. and you, and you mentioned, um, uh, privately about your connection in the music industry too. And like, I feel like that's probably a part of it too, of why people feel yeah. comfortable with you. Cause like, that's such a good way to connect with people, you know, through, through music and yeah, not too. <laughs> totally. I love that. Um, <laughs> So third pillar of Move Happy is movement related. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, start, started as a, a program in a psych hospital with zero. We had like $10 between all of us to split. Yeah. So we had like $0 to spend on the patients. And I knew, I knew the power of movement for my own mood. And there's, you know, enough evidence in all kinds of white papers on it. Uh, but it all starts with what we enjoy doing. And so with that in mind, what are some of your favorite ways to move your body that make you feel good? Yeah, I like hiking. Mm -hmm. um, I have the Stowe Mountain parking pass. Stowe Mountain is amazing. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, we try to go up Stowe Mountain at least once a month. Um, and I try to go at least twice a week. Um, mm -hmm. on one of those trails. Cool. Yeah, I live really close to it. So maybe that helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um I do want to go up Kennesaw Mountain I don't know if you've been over there no not yet I want to yeah. though that's so cool yeah, we should go let's do it cool. <laughs> yeah um what else I don't I don't know what what those are good nature-based kind of it sounds like yeah. you like um going out into nature with your with your family that's awesome Love yes that. yes Love um, my boyfriend actually wants to get um fishing poles so we can start like just relaxing and looking mm -hmm. at the water. We, we like um, looking at water and hiking. Love it. Very awesome. relaxing. Yeah, it really is. And, and there's a lot of science up. behind it too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it's like, oh man, the technology isn't working, but oh, it's so beautiful to get that break. Mm -hmm. yep. Especially I'm in tech. So even when I work nine to five, I would turn off my phone or not even open my laptop. I didn't even want to look at my TV sometimes. Yeah because we just look at technology so much. So just imagine, you know, like we know what it can cause, the addictions it can cause. So we take precautions and yep. I advise other people shit too. So yeah, for I your think own that's... mental sanity, because we're not built yes. to look at technology and tap our fingers. Um, I think we have the strongest thumbs of all time. In <laughs> 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 history, like what else? They, they were so probably true. their legs more because, you know, absolutely they move around a lot so yep also it all ties into our obesity problem and yep. it's just mm -hmm. it's it's so rapid and fast like someone can have two million followers in one friend in real life yep and it's just it's a lot of you know mental health that we need to get together the food stuff I'm really woke when it comes to food like they're poisoning us straight up <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a friend that wants to end hunger so we're, we're, we're going to team up with him, um, to build some software for him and test it so, so he can end hunger and then I, I can that. end homelessness and I can feed them. <laughs> so we're just we're really trying to make a big impact before we die. So I love it. I love your heart. That's really our, our, our motto. We always talk about what lasting impact can we make mm -hmm. in, if not in the world, at least in our community. Yes start start global and that or start local and go global yes. yeah yeah I and for us that. that's Atlanta so whoop, whoop. 
Love it. <laughs> so with that in mind, what are you really excited about company wise, business wise for people that, you know, have heard your story and want to connect with you? What's, what's a way that they can do that? Yeah. So we're looking for QA engineers okay. um, that know automation, mm -hmm. um, all levels, um, lead, maybe a manager because, um, have a good feeling some good projects are going to come through cool um <laughs> so we can start ramping up and just become successful so we can essentially help others um that's Love what that. i'm really excited for you know helping others that's the end goal that's what i'm the most excited about and i honestly won't be happy unless i can make like some type of lasting impact um in regards to like homelessness in my community Mm -hmm. um, and like with police situations because I've seen a lot of stuff firsthand because I've lived like in the hood so yeah. even though um some people don't believe me but I didn't let like certain situations I was in or lived in kind of make me who that who I was who I am mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so I yeah. love that <laughs> so really if to get back to my community it's my main focus in life I love that. So if they're a QA automation engineer, uh, what's the best way they can connect with you? You want to drop a link? Yeah. yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, look, look us up on LinkedIn, Serene Quality or Ryan Taylor, um, serenequalityqa.com. Um, Perfect. If you type in Serene Quality Atlanta on Google, we mm -hmm. will pop up. <laughs> love it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And last but not least, I always love to close out the show with, you know, fun little on the spot question. Yeah. And so I'm just I like, thought, totally, yeah. <laughs> I'm totally pulling this out of thin air because <laughs> we didn't talk about this before. Um, so when you're not, you know, building your empire and mm -hmm. spending time with your, your son, what's, what's something that you really enjoy doing the two of you? Um, me and my son, uh -huh. um, recently we really like trampoline parks. Ooh, yeah. yeah How old is he? Lot. They popped up like, <laughs> like they're like Waffle House. <laughs> Rock climbing, trampoline park. We want to go in Cobb County. There's um this mm -hmm. indoor skydiving. Ooh, yeah. that sounds like fun. Like, honest, I want to go. Now we have to pay to do something physical. It's so crazy now. <laughs> I'm a conspiracy theorist. We need to let me know. On yeah, let me know when you're doing that skydive thing. I want to do that too. <laughs> okay. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, thank you again for taking time. I know you're super busy. This has been so fun. Thanks for taking time to be on the Move Happy Movement podcast. Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye.